Hey, what is up guys? Masterleaf here, back to do another video. And today I'm going to commentate over Rick, a game that I played on Tournament Odyssey a while ago. This is going to be versus Phoenix. I'm going to be playing as the Orange GDI. My opponent will be playing as the Marked of Kane. Now I know this map is featured a lot on my channel. It's a pretty popular map. There's going to be more variety soon. In fact, I may even get into map making myself in the spring summer. But uh, there is some exciting things um, in relation to the 1.2 plus patch coming then. So probably not going to happen for me. But yeah, th there may be maps from other players that I feel will have potential to overcome the dominance of these community maps here made by Technique. Technique's maps are still the most played of all. Pred maps also have their fair share of use, though some of the spawn positions are a bit asymmetrical, like on Twisted Rift, which in my opinion is the best version of that uh, map design, but not symmetrical. But so uh, R20 is... The ideas are being discussed now and I have a list of 40 or so things it's not just going to be balance changes it's going to be some quality of life additions and improvements overall to the game it is after all the 15th anniversary of Kane's Wrath this year so the update for 1.02 plus will reflect that I'm going to put extra effort into fixing bugs exploits uh, addressing balance concerns and some extremely uh, exciting things to come with that. So my, one of my goals in R20 actually is to make Steel Talons a competitively viable faction. And, uh, just to give you a few ideas of what will come with that. Harvesters, the Heavy Harvester will have the same uh, HP as the Reaper 17 Harvester without the shield. So 6,000 health. The Reaper Harvester, by the way, has more health compared to the Scrin one, even without the shields. So in R20, the Steel Talon Harvester will match that. And that's not all. I'm considering also a price reduction for the Titan and Wolverine, taking it to $1,200 and $800 respectively. I'm aware of the balance problems that may arise from a cheaper Wolverine, in particular against Trowler 59 and factions like Black Hand where their infantry will get absolutely mauled by the Wolverine when it's cheaper. So that's going to come along with a AP ammo nerf to the Wolverine. I think a small nerf to the Wolverine's AP ammo damage in exchange for a cheaper anti-infantry walker will be the way to go. Now, I do have some foam earbuds in, so I'm probably talking a bit weird because I can't hear myself speak properly. Hopefully this comes out well. I'm going into this base of a push. I've always got something to talk about, guys, when these games are heating up. Always things to discuss, but I hope you all enjoyed that 10 things you didn't know about Kane Drive video. I'm uh, very thrilled to see the positive response to that. I have a part two planned, so expect that to come out next month or the month afterwards. I want to space content like that out a little bit, just so you guys uh, can look forward to it. Now, it's not going to take as long to get out as my last video. Uh, I can probably produce that in a week at most. So I'm getting pushed here. Phoenix with those Scorpion tanks, he must have gone for two War Factories. He's going to push back here. He's got a second War Factory down. I'm a little bit behind. Uh, I'm GDI. Not a good position to be in against Mark Kane. The reason I want to highlight this game is just because Mark Kane versus GDI games are very interesting to me. I think it's the one of the best matchups in the game currently. Noticed in Cybert's channel that the uh, response for um, all the Trout 59 is bad and I completely understand. I myself felt guilty picking Traveller in that championship and uh, in R20 Traveller 59 will not nearly be as prevalent. All the things that are making them oppressive and OP that exist now will be toned down and there will be some serious issues addressed with that faction because there's no point in picking Skrin or Reaper 17 when Traveller has such a distinct advantage over those other sub-factions. Pred tanks out in en masse. 
Lots of them. Got the Railguns upgrade for GDI, which increases my tank's damage output from 525 to 675 damage per shot. Oh no, never mind. I'm talking about the Titan here. That's that's Titan. The Titan has stat, stats, but the Pred tank does 400 damage per shot, and then that's increased to 525 with the Railguns. I know some stats because I look at the XML files all the time. You can actually find those XML files yourself if you Google them. Uh, CNCNZ has that all for you to uh, investigate. Though the values are different in 1.02 plus, which is this patch, though not for most units. It's a good reference point for what is this patch. I went for a triple refinery play in this game, which is something you rarely see, but I need extra macro against my decaying because I want to go for an expansion while also spamming units from two war factories. This also allows me to be a little bit wasteful as well. I'm targeting down this tech center. Probably not going to get it, but if I take off the fence, then maybe I can snipe that tier three in this patch. Fences when no longer visible, aka when the structure is under 66% health. Uh, becomes much easier to destroy. It's like the structure has no longer that uh, armor bonus that the fences confer. All of these bike buggy moving in, I'm going to kill them. I did lose my tanks in the top of the map. I'm going to transition into a double orca play. Lots of preds and APCs all over the map. I'm spamming pit bulls now and orcas because stealth tanks are usually the play. So the orca pit bull transition is actually a really smart one by me because that will allow me to counter stealth tanks effectively. Plus, since I've got those triple refineries, if he one clicks me, I'm gonna have two refineries still. So it's almost like I didn't get clicked, though he does kill a harvester for his trouble. I could have got the cell. Crane has served its use, so I'm gonna sell that one off. And he may have even seen the orcas, but this, this is a, some good play for me. I actually think this is going well for me. I did use the radar scan, unfortunately, to detect those avatars. Could have used it in his uh, expansion to maybe kill a harvester or two nonetheless though i'm moving into this base i don't want to sack this force i'm being very careful here there's a stealth tank i'm going to take that out nice snipe from those pit bulls this stealth tank is going down may kill one orca for its trouble avatars taking damage i may kill both the avatars which is really great and uh, harvester situation on my expansion not particularly great but this army of Pred APCs is just up in the top of the map. I'm trying to do what I can. He's also moved his MCV like I have done. And Tipcor has just completed. So this attack force will be taken out with ease, I think. The quad tower upgrades is researched from him. It does play that sound for every player when you place a shredded turret. Probably want to address that in R20 as well. That's a, a bug slash issue that occurred in the vanilla game. A lot of bugs were associated with quad turrets, not just the desync, but animations in general. And uh, there was problems with the uh, shredded turret when it was really damaged. It just wouldn't fire from the shredded turrets itself. It would fire from the base of the turret. Oh, man, there were so many issues with that. Not to mention the terrible build animation from that shredded turret. All of that has been fixed. And R20 will also have a comparable number of fixes and improvements to this game. It was a real nice addition bringing Quad Turrets into the fold because that is part of the game. Quad Turrets have always been part of it. But they were removed because the desync was supposedly not fixable or it was quote end quote a silly upgrade. All I had to do was just adjust the damage of tip core and charged particle beam shredded turrets to compensate for that fourth turret that was added on. That's literally all that I had to do. I did increase the cost of the quad turret upgrade by $500. And for every $500, that also means it takes 15 seconds longer to upgrade. That's just how upgrades work in Kane Draft. 15 seconds uh, corresponds to $500 when it comes to upgrades, unless it's railguns or shields. Raider Buggy Scout comes in. No AP ammo for me, but I've got this Pitbull Force. I'm going to move into this base. There's no shredder turrets there just yet with charged particle beams. I've got multi-pronged attacks coming in, going for that mortar upgrade, dropping the Bloodhound so I can deal with a stealth tank. And I see a couple of upgraded power plants, and that's one way of me 
you know, dealing with those Shredder Turrets, because I know he's going to be attacking and defending his base with Shredder Turrets. I'm going to attack the exposed, upgraded Shredder Turrets. He's going to be extremely low on power. He's going to have to, his build queue is going to be reduced to a halt. This will double the time it takes for him to produce or build anything. I've got the uh, alt skins on my spikes and EMP control centers. You can get that yourselves if you download the alternate version of my 4K mod. Links are always down below in the video description. Two more stealth tanks will face off against these pit bulls. And his redeemer is out. I have not yet got my Marv. I'm going to put down some minefields. It's about the most I can possibly do. There's also a push coming in. And these pitbulls are just doing so much damage with that mortar upgrade. It only costs a thousand dollars, and it does a lot for your pitbulls. It makes the seven hundred dollar unit a lot more versatile. Makes it good at killing structures, especially with the weakened fences in this patch. And I will just about hold off against this redeemer at the expense of losing all my pitbulls. He did clean up all of the pits. There's a zone trooper there, which I did build to the text for stealth tanks because I was afraid of being hit by more. Scanner packs also will allow me to do some harassment to his harvesters. They have a very decent detection radius, uh, the scanner packs. No uh, railguns online for me. I've got the mammoth tanks out just to kill stealth tanks again because I was afraid of him going venoms. Mammoth tanks also double up as like a soft counter to venoms and aircraft. Uh, great thing about Mav tanks is they don't leave husks. By the way, guys, Mav tanks in R20, which is the next patch I'll be doing, will be way better. Than, and I'm not going. I'm not going to do any new change. I'm just going to undo a change that EA did to the Mav tanks in patch 1.09 of Tyburn Wars, which was they uh, made the turret rotation speed a third of what it was. They made it sort of like the Overlord tank in generals, where it was just slow and cumbersome, when originally it didn't have that problem. So I think that's the way to fix the Mammoth tank. A lot of players wanted to see it have a range buff, but I don't agree. I just think that it has to have its main issue resolved, which is its inability to target fast moving units and to just be <laughs> responsive. And that will definitely help in that aspect. 15 more pitbulls out for me, so this is a very green zero S strategy. I've got two avatar husks reclaimed, mortars as well, just moving in, orcas are, are overhead to dispatch that avatar. There's no double A turret, but these orcas are being shredded by these tip core bikes. Just one um, shot from the tip core, and that's all that's required. Quad turret, uh, Sam's coming down, and now these pitbulls are in some trouble. There's enlightened there, but I've got mortars on these pits, so if I focus fire the ground in the right time, I can kill these enlightened squads. Mount of tank getting destroyed by the redeemer. That was unfortunate. That's just holding the line, so he's not in my base, causing problems with rage gen. Uh, the redeemer does decide to pull back. That'll give me some time to get my Marv out. This is a very tactical and strategical game now. Both of us are trying to do some damage here and there. Like, I am continuously a aware of the fact that he could have stealth tanks out on the map. That's why I'm building pit bulls, even though it may not make sense. It, it does make all the sense in the world because of stealth tanks. Stealth tanks are just that powerful. You could see he had one or two still there. He's, just, he's probably building them again, so I'm building more pit bulls. And by the way, a another tip that I'm going to share here. Uh, it doesn't really matter what order you put units into the Marv. If you put engineers first into the Marv and then zone troopers afterwards, it doesn't actually affect the range of the zone troopers. The back slots in the Marv and all epic units don't actually make a difference. The unit doesn't uh, have the issue of one garrison firing and the others not. So it doesn't matter what order you put things in there. It may look better though just having your railguns and up in front, but ultimately it does not matter. Orcas out here. I've only got three. I'm not going to rebuild them, but it's handy having one or two just for the sensor pods. I think I've got a sensor pod on my Marv, which is going to allow it to detect stealth. It's going to allow it to kill, for example, some stealth EMP buggies. There's a Marv there. Uh, this Marv tank may get destroyed. He uses the race gen on a 
singular mammoth tank this mammoth unfortunately may not make it out alive it will be surprising if it does no it goes down a lot of ma armor on that mammoth but ultimately not going to matter emp comes down on that mob now he's going to approach it and kill it with all those beam cannons beam cannons starting to lock down on that force and now i'm in a frantic situation i use the orbital strike on his uh, beam cannons i run into the orbital strike i only noticed in the last moment the specters were there he's got a mixed army of specters and beam cannons for his artillery and this is extremely messy avatar staying put at the back i can't really move out with those because of those enlightened squads and now that i know he's got enlightened i need to make some anti-infantry units but this is a very very clutch game i was like okay i might as well just dig some foxholes here just to stall the advance for a little bit the Marv needs to get back to base force and repairs. It does have an engineer inside of it, but that's not going to be quick enough of a, re of a repair. So Pitbull's still out for me in force, uh, though the infantry will make short work of them. Lots of EMP available to Mark Decane. They basically have an infinite supply of it. And I can't approach his MCV either because he's just going to set a power plant and lock down my Marv. Marv's only at half health. Uh, double A turret comes down. The avatars need to get back. I'm queuing juggernauts just to fend this off. I do have the high ground, which uh, e even in a video game is a, an advantage. Having the high ground does definitely help in this situation. And also he's approaching my base in a choke. Lots of turrets for him. So he's just going to do a slow advance on my base. The sniper teams will also allow me to detect stealth. I can see his MCV and I might be able to destroy this before it deploys. MCV needs to deploy. That's a nice direct hit there. There's actually a minefield right there. Did I deploy? Oh, he couldn't deploy the MCV because I had a minefield which I deployed with the APC earlier. So that was actually a crucial thing in this engagement. Just look at that, guys. You never know when these mine jobs will come in handy. He couldn't deploy his MCV because I had a minefield there. Marv. Taking damage, it gets EMP'd finally. Um, Spectre's about to open fire on it, and this Marv is pretty much dead meat. There's nothing I can see uh, from holding this off. I've only got one Juggernaut. There's a Hus back there, but this Marv is taking huge amount of damage. The Redeemer does go down. So does my Marv. So both the Epix units fall. And I've got a bunch of Pipples in his base, and a Commando too. One random ass Commando right in the back there. And if I am allowed to recapture these husks, then maybe I can hold this position off against his push. Because remember, he still has those beam cannons. He still has those Spectre artilleries. Commando is very good. I can kill the infantry. I can kill the uh, base back there. I'm going to reclaim a Juggernaut. And for somehow my Commando died. I'm not sure what it was. Maybe he's got a Venom or two. Doesn't matter if he's got them because I got Pipples. Which I can, which are basically a, a invulnerable to venoms. I can just kill the venoms with them. I'm gonna make my way to his expansion. If I can stop him harvesting in that field, then that's going to, you know, stop him from funding this push. He did reclaim those spikes back, which I took from him. These quad turret shredder turrets are quite a problem. Juggernaut's falling once more. The stealth tanks out here. I've got two avatars, which I can try and hold off stealth tanks with but uh, it's going to be difficult avatars i got very good range compared to the other tier three units so that's a decent response to the uh, stealth tanks but i need to be very careful because that's my standing army currently i'm building a marv i think i've got a reclamator hub didn't decide to sell it off most of the time players choose to sell their reclamator hubs off but occasions like this it actually was beneficial for me to keep it around the one zone trooper I get from selling it off isn't as of impactful against Mark Decaying because of all the anti infantry that they have. Even the Tiberium troopers just kill the, the, those very quickly. And this heroic pit bull, look how much damage this does. The double fire rate from it will quickly and swiftly take out those two Tiberium core stealth tanks. I can hear an MCV moving in the fog of war. Harvester gets sniped. These pit bulls are doing so much work for me. There's an elite people there as well. There's several veterancy ranks on them, but I see the enlightened squads and oh man, it's, this is really bad for me now. I can't hold, I can't stop it. I can't even call for transport. There's, there's tip core bikes there. These pitbulls are doomed. He uses the uh, EMP and that's it. Those pitbulls are dead, man. 
There's nothing I can do. It's going to be a miracle if these people can escape and survive. Uh, it's not going to matter. I'm getting some nice extra shots off on those bikes, which may help me in this next fight if he doesn't repair those up. I decide to sell my Reclamator hub, so I just simply don't have the funds now to get my Marv out. I need to reclaim this uh, Juggernaut Husk and get a few Hammerheads out just to deal with these and Lighten Squads because those are the only thing that are going to stop my push. He lost his MCV. He's got one MCV, but he's got no build radius around this area. So Hammerheads are going to be a pretty good answer to the Enlightened. Hammerheads moving in. Commando, I thought, hey, why not just build a Commando again? Uh, the only thing I have to be concerned of is the uh, potential likelihood of Venom. So I have to think in my opponent's shoes. And I believe I actually was. I'm thinking well in advance. I, before I even saw that Venom, I sold my MCV just to get the Bloodhounds down. Because I am consciously aware of him having Venoms. Because it's always a game of rock, paper, scissors. These Bloodhounds are going to arrive just as I need them to. It's really, really clutch this, man. Look at all these enlightened squads he had. If I didn't call in these bloodhounds, I would have lost my commando. I would have lost all of these avatars and juggernauts. There's an army of units coming to my base, but this commando, which is still above half health, is just sniping all of the enlightened. There's more squads of enlightened coming my way. There's one APC. I'm going to put this commando in the APC to provide protection against those venoms, and this is super clutch. I'm building now a bunch of... Uh, slingshots to deal with these Venoms and this Commando coming in clutch, taking out that, uh, that uh, enlightened army. All the Venoms finally get picked off by these AP ammo units and now this Commando can just evacuate this APC and I can deal with the rest of his base. And I thought that was a pretty crazy game. Very, very back and forth, start to finish. There was not one moment in that game which didn't have any action. And I thought that was a fun game. I don't think you guys knew who would come out on top there, but ultimately I did with the GDI play. The Pitbulls, uh, the Juggernauts, uh, all of the units coming together, the combined arms, even the Zone Troopers playing their part against those stealth tanks. The key is to stop the stealth tanks from uh, wrecking your economy. And that map, it's a little bit easier to defend against stealth tanks because of the chokes. There's less areas where the stealth tanks can wander around. But uh, in general, sensor pods, uh, stealth tank, uh, sensor pods, uh, zone troopers, and pitbulls are the way to defend against that stuff. So yeah, guys, hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then don't forget to hit the like button. I'd really appreciate that. And subscribe to my channel to stay notified of my new uploads. So yeah, guys, this is going to be Master Leaf. Peace out.